I want to I want to talk with you to you uh, from this subject. Trust the integrity of the seed. Look at your neighbor again. Say, neighbor, you must trust the integrity of the seed. Amen. So I thank God for that reality. Let's pray and then we'll go before the Lord. Let's go before the Lord in prayer and then we'll get into this. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and bless you. Father, we've worshipped you. We've had the privilege of worshiping and honoring you this morning, and you have not disappointed us. We thank you for blessing us with your presence. Father, we don't take that for granted. It is a privilege when you decide to come and sit and enthrone yourself upon our worship, upon our praise, upon our hearts, upon our souls. So, Father, we thank you this morning again for this privilege and opportunity that you brought us here. Father, I pray that as your word goes forth, that I will speak as an oracle, Father, that you, Holy Spirit, will touch the hearts of each and every one of us, that there'll be receptivity to the word of God. We come against every distraction, every wandering. We declare in Jesus' name that you will find your mark. You will have pinpoint accuracy, and you will find the mark in each and every one of our hearts this morning because we want to be more like Jesus. We want to please you. We want that rest. We want that freedom that you have promised. So, Father, we thank you again for the privilege to break open the word of life. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Praise the Lord again. I wanted to share with you from the subject, trust, uh, trust the integrity of the seed. I want you to turn over in your Bible to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Praise God. Verse 16 and 17. And we'll see how the Lord's going to uh, unpack this. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, and, and while we're turning there, I just want to say this quickly, you know, because if there's one thing that I've learned and continue to learn is that I am the sum total of what it is I've been sowing throughout my life. I am the sum total of what I've been sowing Throughout my life, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are the sum total of what you've been sowing in your life. Amen. And, and one of the things that, that really uh, helped me and set me free when I came to faith in Christ 30 years ago, my God, it's been that long. I feel like we're just getting started. But coming to faith in Christ, as I got a hold of these, these principles, these truths I'm about to share with you. Uh, if, if we could, if we could accomplish things by feelings, do you know we'd be, we'd be walking through water on water, we'd be splitting seas and, uh, if, if, if it was just my emotions and my desires that would bring forth the things that I desired in life, I believe every one of us in here would, would certainly be faith giants in that, in that arena. Amen. But it's not that way. And thank God that it isn't. You know how we say one day, one day I'm up, one day I'm down, one day I'm level to the ground. Praise the Lord. You know, one day I'm believing, one day I'm not. Amen. But I thank God for his love, for his mercy, for his truth and his patience and how he works with us, his children. Amen. You over in Genesis chapter two. One, one portion of scripture, it says here. And the Lord, two, 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 two verses of scripture, and the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Praise God. So here we see, quick backdrop, and I always uh, encourage everyone to read your Bibles. Praise the Lord, read your Bibles. Go back, check, check, see if these things which we say are true. And so here in this portion of scripture, it says that the Lord gave them a command and said, you can eat from every other tree, but there's one tree I don't want you to touch. I don't want you to touch. And of course, we know it's just like us. The one he said don't touch is the one we want to touch. Amen. Isn't that something? Even today, can, can you agree with that? Yeah, it seems like the things that you should not touch is the things you want to touch. 
It's all right. Praise the Lord. So it, now notice it said with the, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It was not really the tree of knowledge. It was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And just like today, you know, we, we, you know, we want knowledge. We, you know, we, we seeking, you know, things like that, something deep. And, you know, we want something, you know, so celestial and, you know, that's, you know, you know what I mean? It just can't be simple. It can't be simple like go to the cross. It can't, it just can't be that simple to just go to the cross. But I thank God that in his love and his mercy, uh, he didn't even, he didn't even kick the first parents. He didn't even just throw them to the side. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Look at chapter three, verse 15. We're building for a moment. Chapter three of Genesis. We're going to look at one verse of scripture. And of course, the Lord had commanded him here in the second chapter. He commanded him not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then if any of you know the backdrop of the story, it, it says that the, the enemy came uh, through the form of a serpent. And he began to seduce the woman. He began to flatter her and, you know, all kind of things of that nature. And uh, what happened was, of course, she ended up giving in uh, to his flattery, giving in to, to the things that he was soliciting. And the Bible says, and her husband was with her, and she gave him the fruit, the same tree God told him not to eat from. And she ate from it and gave it to her husband. He was down with it. He ate too. Praise the Lord. So every, everybody, everybody was in on it. So everybody had to suffer the consequences. Amen. And so, and so here in, in verse 15, the God had, but let me just back up a moment. God had said to the man, he says, from this day forward, you're going to eat from the sweat of your brow. In other words, life was going to become hard. Things were going to become difficult. And then he told the woman, he says, your childbearing would begin to be painful. You would have, you would have severe pain in your, 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 your childbearing, etc. And one of the things he had said was that, that you would begin to want to rule over your husband. You would begin to want to rule over your husband. Amen? Amen. And so in verse 15, it says, uh, God says this to the serpent. Of course, he was talking to Satan. He says, I will cause hostility between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He will bruise your head and you will bruise his heel. Praise God. And of course, we know that to, that to mean uh, talking about the cross, talking about the cross, that the bruising of the heel would be the Christ going to the cross and that the crushing of the head of the serpent had to do with God breaking the power and the authority of Satan, that there would now be an opportunity, say opportunity, for men and women to come from underneath the tyrannical rule of Satan. Amen. We ain't talking about a hot sauce bottle. We're talking about a real devil, a real entity. And so God said here that the seed of the woman, which of course, is talking about Christ, the Messiah, would come and he would crush his head, freeing and opening the way for every human person, whosoever will, to be set free. To be set free. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it ain't your sister, it ain't your brother, it ain't your husband, it ain't your wife, it ain't your neighbor, it ain't your boss, it's the devil. Amen. So now whoever chooses to get in there on with him and be used by him. But at the end of the day, the root behind all of that is the devil. Amen. He don't like to talk about him, but we talk about him and we talk about him when we're exposing him. That's the only time we talk about him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Turn over to Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. We're going to look at one verse of, verse of scripture. And so here it said that that the seed of the woman, which, which would be Christ, was going to crush his authority. We know that was, happened at the cross. That happened at the cross. That Christ became that seed. He was that seed that God said would come. In verse, 22, uh, verse 17 of chapter 22, this is the Lord talking to Abraham. 
And he's pronouncing to Abraham, who Abraham ended up being the father of the redemption movement, meaning Abraham was the one through whom the seed, Christ, would begin to come. He would come through that lineage, through the promise that God cut with Abraham through covenant, that Christ would come through Abraham's lineage. He is that seed, that seed. All through scriptures, all through the things that you saw, you saw, uh, you saw, um, how many of you saw things like the Ten Commandments and, and, and you saw the killing up the babies and the seed and Herod killing? All of that was because the enemy was trying to kill the seed before it came in the earth. He did not want a deliverer to come into the earth. Amen? So he was trying to kill everything to get to that seed. But how many of you know, thank God he didn't? Amen. Praise the Lord. And so here in verse 17 it says that in blessing, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply your seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand, which is upon the seashore and your seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Your seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Now that seed again is talking about Christ, that Christ would possess the very gate of his enemies. Praise God. Now, we understand gates. Gates is the places of interest to access, coming and going. Whoever got the gates, whoever controlled the gates, controlled the city. Whoever controls the gates to your soul controls your life. Whoever controls the gate, the, in, the entrance, the outgoing, the coming in, whatever controls that controls my life. Is that all right? So he said Christ would come and that he would possess the very gates of his enemies. Praise the Lord. And so Christ is the very seed of God. He is God's seed. Everything in life works on the seed principle. As I said, when we started, you and I are the sum total today of what it is we've been sowing. So if I want to look at my life, examine my life to see where I'm at, if I don't like where I'm at, I have to find out what kind of seeds I've been sowing. Amen. Is that plain? So thank God, thank God, this word here, we call it seed bag. This is a seed bag. Say, this is a seed bag. See? So what God has done is that God has simply given us some seed. And then he teaches us and desire to teach us how to operate in the principle of sowing and reaping. And every area of life. And so we, we're going we're gonna to hit some things. Because the thing that happens, the Bible says that my people are being destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Not smart, not academia. Not that kind of knowledge. You know, we're smart, you know, different areas or what have you. But he's talking about when it comes to the spiritual life, we are, we are, we are ignorant. And that's the way we need to approach it. I am ignorant of spiritual things without the help of God. I cannot understand without the help of God. Amen? So I want to share some things. Seeds represent concepts that apply to the natural realm and the spiritual realm simultaneously. I'm going to say seeds represent concepts that apply to the natural realm and the spiritual realm simultaneously. That even as we see things happening in the natural, the same way is true in the spirit. There are things that are happening in the spirit realm as a result of seeds that are being sown. You stay with me. Are you with me? So a seed is a self-contained unit designed for reproduction. In other words, if you take or I take a seed, if I had a seed in my hand, we were sharing this Monday night, hey, uh, John Benz, how are you? Amen. Yes, you are, sir. Yes, you are. You've been summoned. You know, it's, it's, like, it's like we were talking Monday night, it's just like you have a seed in your hand and you look at that seed. And in that seed is the potential from that one seed for a whole forest. For a whole forest, right there in that one seed. And notice I said the potential. It doesn't just happen automatically, but in that seed is the potential. 
God himself operates in the very law that he created of seed time and harvest, according to Genesis 8.22. So God himself, and this is what takes the mystery out of it. This is what takes this spooky hocus pocus, what is this stuff, whatever it is they say, all this kind of magical stuff out of, out of this, this faith walk with God. You know, God works in mysterious ways. You know, how many of you have said that? I mean, come on now. I mean, we've said that. We've heard that. We heard mama say it. Grandma said it. You know, we've heard other people say it. And we, you know, we just said it. We echoed it. But there's nothing mysterious about God. There's nothing mysterious. He's not hiding. He's not cloaking dagger, you know, trying to keep stuff from us and, you know, and think. No, no. But he wants to teach us. He wants to teach us how to operate in his laws and principles that will bring forth the results that he desire and he know we desire whether we know that or not. That's what we really want. How many of you want a blessed life? Amen. Praise the Lord. So turn over to Genesis chapter, chapter 1. We're moving. Genesis chapter 1. We're going to look at two verses, uh, verse 11 and 12, because we like, you know, we teach the word here. That's right. Pastor was saying it uh, a little earlier. He was saying, you know, the name, by talking about the name of Jesus, and then he said, God, you've, you have uh, exalted your word even above your name. Many people call on his name. But what happens with the word? Now, imagine if God just answered everybody just because they said Jesus. Now, I'm going to help some folks. God's going to help us now. I mean, people stump they told Jesus. You know what I'm saying? People get burnt on it. Oh, Jesus. So, so just, just saying the name of Jesus will not necessarily bring the results. Is that all right? So God, in his infinite wisdom, he said, I know my children. He said, so I'll make sure I'm going to put this here, let you know. I exalted my word above my name. Is that all right? Yes. Amen. So here in Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 and 12, it said, Then God said, Let the land sprout in vegetation, with vegetation, every sort of seed-bearing plant and trees that grow seed-bearing fruit. These seeds will then produce the kind of plants and trees from which they came. They will produce the kind of plants and trees from which they came. You can't plant an apple seed and get oranges. You can't plant orange seeds and get apples. You can sit there and say, But I want oranges. You can sit there, I can sit there all day. I want oranges. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. Every seed bearing after its kind. And that is what happened. I love that. The land produced vegetation, all sorts of seed bearing plants and trees with seed bearing fruit. Their seeds produce plants and trees of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Praise God. God saw that it was good. And John chapter 12 uh, as I was sharing with you, is, uh, because I know, um, you know, we got a lot to get to. John chapter 12, verse 23 and 24. Let me just put this plug in. You can go to our, I'll go to our site on, on the YouTube. You can go right to CFCC Media, and you can get every message that has been preached and, teached and taught in this house. Amen? Because that's what you need to do. People talk about, you know, I want, you know, I want to learn the word of God. Well, you can go right to CFCC Media. And you can get your pen and pencil out, your pad, whatever. And you can have your own Bible study and everything on days when we don't have Bible study. Amen. Praise the Lord. But <laughs> praise the Lord. John chapter 12, verse 23 and 24, a very familiar portion of Scripture. Jesus said this here. Jesus replied, now the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory. He says, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. Praise God. So Jesus himself was the seed of God. God operating in his own principle. I want you to catch this. So like I said, we're going to remove a lot of, you know, that, you know uh, wrong thinking. God himself operates in the very laws that he asked you and I to operate in. He holds himself to it. Immutable, <laughs> unchanging. And so here it is, God is saying, God, Jesus is saying here, he says that I'm actually the seed and the reason that you and I are sitting here is because Jesus was the seed. So it wasn't, it wasn't just something that just kind of happened. 
It happened over thousands of years of history. It took 42 generations before Jesus came. God started speaking, but it took 42 generations before he came and went to that cross. So God believed his own word. He believed the integrity of his own seed. And so that's what happens. God says, now, I, I, I want to teach you this principle about the seed. And so now Jesus is sown. Now many lives. Oh, how many of you made Jesus your Savior and Lord of your life? If you haven't, before it's over, we, we, we trust you're not going to leave here without it. Amen. But, but that's the reality. That's the reality. Amen. And James chapter 1, write some of this down. James chapter 1, verse 18 Listen to God, watch how God operate. It says, of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of his first fruits of his creatures. That God, out of his own will, brought us forth by what? The word of truth. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things have become. Listen at this. Here. I, I thought this was one. The work of a new creation is even greater than God's work of creating the world. That the, the miracle of the new birth, that God took a wretched uh, sinner, lost person, that God took that person. And transform their life, literally recreated them, is greater than the first work that God did. That even the angels, even the angels look and they are in awe of what God had did. You understand? Like say somebody got seemed like somebody got you in a in a catch twenty two, like the devil had God in the catch twenty two. Look what I did with Adam. Look how I made him fall. And here's the, the awesome wisdom of God. That God says, I'm going to do something even greater than the first creation. I'm going to take something broken, messed up, and I'm going to recreate it. I'm, come on, man. Y'all, come on now. Listen, listen, listen. Hallelujah. Come on, Sheila. I love that. Amen. So he said, the work of the new creation is greater than God's work of creating the world. He says, my brethren, it was more difficult if such terms are ever applicable, applicable to God. It was more difficult to create a Christian than to create a world. What was there to begin with when God made the world? This is a question. He said, there was nothing, but nothing could not stand in God's way. It was at least passive. But my brethren, in our hearts, while there was nothing that could help God, there was so much that could and did oppose him. Our stubborn wills, our deep prejudices, our ingrained love of iniquity. All these, our great, uh, uh, all these, our great God opposed thee and aimed at thwarting your design. Yes, great God, it was great to make a world, but greater to create a new creature in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Is that, is that awesome or what? That time, he is bad. Look at this. Come on, look at somebody. Say, he is bad, man. Oh, see, I, I got to stay on course, man. This thing, I got to stay on course. Praise the Lord. Because I tell you, I mean, you know, you know, especially the time, you know, we're living in with superheroes and all this kind of Marvel and DC and all this stuff. Man, come on. I'm telling you, Jesus is bad. Our God is bad. See, and we got to pour this truth into our children. See, that's why the Bible says, teach them when they're in the house, when you're sitting around the table. You should, have, you should have worship music. You should have music about God. And then all of a sudden, your kid's singing in the car, singing music about God. Here it is, you going through something, and all of a sudden, a song come out of them. I, Pastor, I tell you, this thing is awesome. See? Man, oh, Jesus. Praise the Lord. But I, it, it's just so awesome. Listen, 1 Peter. Y'all heard 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed. Incorruptible seed. Are you listening? God said there's an incorruptible seed on the inside of you if you've accepted Jesus Christ. Being born of incorruptible seed, of, of, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed, what? By the word of God. By the word of God, which lives and remains forever. First John 3 and 9 says his seed remains within us. 
See, the enemy can't touch the seed. See, you and I are not, you and I are not incorruptible. We're corruptible. But the seed on the inside of me is incorruptible. Come on. You can't change. That's why, that's why uh, we used to say this often. We used to say that all the time. We used to say you cannot be unborn again. You know, one minute you won't be born again, then you want to do something, so now you're going to be unborn again. You can't do it. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. So that's why it don't feel good. That's why you ain't happy no more. Hey, you know, ooh, that's why we're not happy no more. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. That's why we're not happy no more. It, it, don't, it don't work no more. Fragrances change. Smells change. You start being around the smell and the atmosphere of God, you go around other smells. I'm telling you now, it's going to start smelling different. I'm telling you right now, when you go around certain atmospheres, it's going to be smelling different. You're not going to like, but you're going to say, I never, I never knew it smelled like that before. See, but when you get around life, the aroma of life, that's what happens. Oh, Jesus, man, this stuff is good, Pastor. Amen. Incorruptible cannot be, listen at this, cannot be perverted. Incapable of disintegration. Come on. Or decay. Come on. This seed is incorruptible. I like this. The apple seed doesn't just grow more apple seeds but more apples with seeds. Come on. The apple seed doesn't just grow more apple seeds, but more apples with seeds. So we are the seed inside the seed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastor, when the Lord showed me this, may I tell you, may I want to take off in my living room. He said, you're the seed, and you and I are the seed inside the seed. We're in Christ. He is the incorruptible one. See, we're in, ooh, I'm going to get ahead of myself. We are inside the seed. Oh, Jesus, help me, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, we're going to, ooh, we're going to hit that one. We got it. We got it. We got it, Pastor. Hallelujah. Listen, all seeds, all seeds are encased in the protective coating. All seeds are uh, encased in the protective coating. Told you we're going to get there. Turn to Colossians chapter 3. See? We are the seed inside the seed. He is the protective coating. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise our God. I tell you. Colossians 3, verse 3 and 4, NLT, it says, For you died to this life. Amen. See how God thinks? As in the mind of God, when you and I went to the cross, as far as God's concerned, you died. You died. See, once you opened your mouth and you asked him to come in, as far as he was concerned, see, you might or I might have said that and then we walked away and went did something else. He said, no, 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 I got your words. I got your words. See, I got your words. You let, you let the seed get on the inside of you. You thought it was just some snot and tears. God said, you let that seed get on the inside of you. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, for you died to this life and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. Your real life is hidden with Christ in God. Say, I'm the seed inside of the seed. Come on, tell your neighbor. I'm the seed inside of the seed. Amen. So my life is hid in Christ, uh, with Christ in God. And listen, what's, and when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. See, in the Bible says it does not yet appear what you shall look like. <laughs> Come on, Pastor. Come on, man. And when he was revealed, we shall look just like him. Oh, Jesus. See, that's what that's what anchors. That's what's to anchor us as we're waiting. Look at your neighbor. Say, trust the integrity of the seed. Come on. Praise God. Praise God. Listen at this. All seed must be cultivated. Turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We're going to read verse 5 to 9. All seed must be cultivated. Listen at this. Paul makes this statement. Paul says, who then is Paul? Who is Apollos but ministers through whom you believed as the Lord gave to each one? He said, I planted Apollos water, but God, say but God, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. 
Now he who plants and he who waters are one. And each one, watch this now, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. Pastor, he was saying that we work with God. For, excuse me. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are God's field. You are God's building. So in other words, every one of us here is a cultivator. Everyone in here is a cultivator. Turn over to Ephesians 4 right quick. Come on, we moving. Y'all got it. Y'all got to move. Come on, it's all right. Amen. Praise God. I am too, elder. Praise the Lord, I tell you. That's right. Come on, I got, in, I got, in, I got impervious seed on the inside of me. You kidding me? It's too late. It's too late. He had me. It's too late. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. All right, praise the Lord. So, so Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verse 16, one verse of scripture. I'm reading from the NLT. He said, he makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Hallelujah. Do you hear that? Yes. Look at your neighbor. neighbor. You are a household cultivator. Come on, you are a household cultivator. Amen. That's why, it, that's like we'll be talking about be some the pastor and you know, ooh, the pastor, the pastor. No, 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 no. Each and every one of us, each and every one of us are cultivators. In the mind of God, every, every one of us should be discipling. So everybody, everybody in here should be watering somebody, cultivating. See, that's how, that's how it continues. See, but if I keep sucking about. If I keep sucking the Bible for 20 years, come on, I'm never going to grow. But if I get it in me and then I start releasing it, see, it's called the law of intake and discharge. Come on, I keep getting more and I keep releasing more. The more God looks for you empty, let me fill you up. You're empty, let me fill you up. Hallelujah. Praise God. Listen at this here. Proverbs 11, write it down. Proverbs 11, verse 25. The generous soul will be made prosperous. And he who waters will also be watered himself. See, that's the principle. He, that's a law, man. He that waters will himself be watered. We must cooperate with the cultivation process. We have to cooperate. See, like you said, nothing just happens. Nothing just happens. A hey, crying ain't going to change nothing. I can tell you, man, I cried for years. If, I got to tell you, if tears could do something, man, I'd be a faith giant. I'm t I'd be a faith giant. <laughs> you kidding me? If worry could do something, I'd be a faith giant. I'm, anybody figured out yet that worry don't do nothing? Mm -mm. Hey, anybody, feel, hey, anybody figured out that, that you just ain't going to get God to just feel sorry for you? Come on. Come on. God said, God said, this was my answer. This was my sorry for you. <laughs> this was my sorry for you. This is the sorry for me. That was his answer to my misery. In the day I wish it was night. At night I wish it was day. Having no assurance for my life. That was the answer for Alton E. Herbert Jr. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. For we must honor the revelation of the seed. Now, we talk about this all the time when it comes to honor. When it comes to honor. When it comes to God, and I learned this about God, you, you can think you are who you are, whatever, I can think I am who I am, but that stuff, that doesn't mean spit to God. Come on. When it comes to God, that don't mean nothing. Oh, you know, you know how it is. A, you know, a guy, you know, he walks around, he's a little diesel, you know, whatever it is, you know, and the woman think he's the best thing since fried ice cream, you know. See, yeah, and then, and then, and then he tries that with God. Then he want to get all up in God. You know, he want to like, like, see what God going to do for him. What are you talking about, little man? This is God. Yeah, this is the creator. <laughs> Come on. See, see, we begin to see things like that. You know, some of us might even emulate people we thought was so, you know, this one and that one was so awesome. And, you know, you ain't, you ain't no, no. You know, but once you, once you have an encounter with Christ, I mean, you're like, little man, who are you? 
You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? That you would boast against the true and living God. That you want somebody to worship you? So are you kidding me? Somebody supposed to somebody supposed to think about you all day? Jesus. I don't know how that ain't in my notes. Praise the Lord. But see, but we must learn to honor the revelation of this. It's an honor that God's revealing this stuff to us. Turn over to Matthew to Mark chapter 4. It's an honor that God is revealing these things to us. Yes, indeed. It is an honor. It is a privilege to partake of the mind of God. You kidding? To let me in on the secrets, the mysteries. Mark chapter 4, verse 9 through 11, then read verse 13. It says, and he said, Jesus, who has ears to hear, let him be hearing. You hear that? Let him be hearing. Not just I heard. Let him continuously be hearing. I can't get one message. You know what I mean? I can't, you know, one time then I'm looking for something to change. Or I tried it. No, you don't try. We just say it all the time. The try to is the lie to. You don't try, Jesus. That was, that was one of the things. People say, you don't try. What do you mean try, Jesus? You kidding me? Bow in your face. Get on your knees. Hallelujah. That's, what, that's one of the things that's wrong today in Christendom because, you know, this honor, this honor thing, people stop honoring God. Like, they come and see if you can bless me between 11 and 11.30. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on. <laughs> come on. I'm watching my watch. If, you know, if you're going to move, you better move now, God, because I got... Come on, man. <laughs> Lord, help us. I, I know it come out kind of funny, but it's... It's the truth, man. We got to stop this stuff. But thank God there ain't none of us in this room. Hallelujah. Woo. Amen. I'm speaking by faith too. Let y'all know. Because you receiving this word that he said, let who has ears to hear, let him be here. You hearing this word today. Listen what he says. And let him consider and understand. And it says, as soon as he, Jesus, was alone, those who were around him with the 12 began to ask him about a parable. And he was teaching the parable about the sow and the seed. About some seed fell on the wayside, some seed fell there. So they wanted Jesus, you know, you come to the master. He's the master teacher. So I'm coming to him, and that's what we can do now. I come to him and say, master, explain that to me. You know, I want, I want to understand it. Right, John? John's always saying that. John said, I want, I want to understand. I, I love that. That's good, John. That's, that's the right heart posture, man. You know, I want to understand. And then he says, and then it says, uh, as soon as he was alone, those who were around him with the 12 began to ask him about the parable. And he said to them, to you, say to me, it has been entrusted the mystery of the kingdom of God. That is the secret counsels of God, which are hidden from the ungodly, which are hidden from the world. But for those outside, but for those outside of our circle, everything becomes a parable to you. It has been given to know the secret to the reign of God. My God. And he said to them, verse 18, do you not understand this parable? How then is it possible for you to discern and understand all the parables? He said, the soul of souls. The soul of souls. So he's saying that the mystery that has been hidden is, it is, is being revealed that I'm now teaching you how to sow the seed, this incorruptible seed. This imperishable seed. He says, I'm teaching you the mystery of it. That even as things are happening in the natural realm, in the spirit realm, you don't see them. But if you sow, and we're going to see, if you sow to the spirit, he's saying then spiritual things will begin to happen. What, what are spiritual things? What are spiritual things? I got, I got too much notes here. I got to just kind of flow. But, you know, what, what are spiritual things? Spiritual things, we're talking about love, joy, peace. Long suffering, gentleness, meekness, long suffering. That's spiritual fruit. According to Galatians chapter 5, that's spiritual fruit. God says, I have blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. In Christ, the seed inside the seed. Say, I'm the seed inside the seed. So he says, These blessings are in Christ. If you are in Christ, then you partake of those blessings. Now you can experience peace. Do you know if peace could be gotten by money? Wouldn't the rich people be the most peaceful people in the world? 
Do you know people would give all they have just for one night, good night of sleep? Just for one night to be a, free of pain? Just to have their conscience no longer tormenting them? But Jesus says, oh, I'm the only one who can give you that. See, that's, that's spiritual blessings. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I read that scripture in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. You ain't got to turn to it. It said, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Listen to what he says. Against such, there is no law. There is no law. There is nothing that can stop a believer from experiencing these, these things here in their life. Why? Because it's inside. It's in the seed. And you can't get in on it unless it gets on you. It has to get in you. Hallelujah. Psalms 25, 30, uh, verse 25, I mean, chapter 25, verse 12 to 14. Who is the man that honors the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. See, if you honor God, he says, I'm going to teach you the way to choose. How many of you be wondering sometimes which way should I go? You know, should I go this way? Should I turn left? God said, if you honor me, I'll teach you which way to choose. I'll teach you which he himself shall dwell in prosperity and his seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with those who honor him and he will show them his covenant. Praise God. Amen. So you got to honor God. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have to learn to have the revelation. We have to learn to honor the seed. Must honor the seed. Honor the seed. Seeds represent concepts that apply, as I shared earlier, both to the natural realm and to the spiritual realm simultaneously. I want to touch that point. Seeds represents concepts that apply both to the natural realm and the spiritual realm simultaneously. When we begin to understand them, we will begin to understand why things have happened in our life and how to affect or change our future results. I'm going to say that again. When we begin to understand them, we will begin to understand why things have happened in our life and how to affect or change our future results. Amen. And I thank God for that reality. Again, we are the sum total of what we've been sowing and what we've been believing. Turn over to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Verse 7 and 9. I'm going to show you something. Because like I said, uh, this, this is what's revolutionized my life. And I know that's so for uh, so many of us in here. The reality of learning that we started sowing new seed. We got a hold to it. And we start believing the integrity of the seed. We start believing the integrity of the seed more than what people say, more than even what my own mind say, even what my own past say. I start believing this. I start believing it. See? And so then I started acting on what I believe. So then I start seeing the fruit. I start seeing the result. I mean, you know, once you start seeing the result, you say, oh, I like this. Let me, let me throw some more seed there then. Hey, why, why would I go if I found fertile ground, I found some place to put seed and I'm getting fruit. Why would I go over here now and put stuff inside of the bush, the dead bushes? Why would I put something on, on some, some soil that's dead? Why would I throw my seed among weeds? Come on. See, so once you, once you and I discover this, this is what happened. We said, now, let me, I need to stay here and keep throwing that seed in there. Let me keep throwing seed. This keeps coming up. That's coming up. Fruit keep coming up. Again, I'm, I, I, I keep giving me seed. I want to be a good investor. I want to be good steward. Let me find some good, this is the kingdom of God. Amen. Say it don't happen by happenstance. Come on. Come on. Galatians 6, 7, and 9, I'm reading from the Amplified. Watch this. Do not be deceived and deluded and misled. God will not allow himself to be snared at scorn, disdain, or mocked by mere pretensions or professions or by his precepts being set aside. See? See, say, say help us, Lord. See? And this is, this is one of the things I discovered. When I started asking the Lord for help, this is what he gave me. 
This is what he gave me. I said, help. Every time I ask the Lord for help, this is what he gives me. I find the answer in his word. I don't care for healing for my body, financial situations, kids, grandkids, the boss, the job, you know, whatever it is. Every answer is in this, this bag of seed, if you will. And he said, I gave you seed. Go sow it. Go sow it. Come on. You got to cultivate, water it. Hallelujah. Jesus. Man, I just, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, let me finish this here. He inevitably deludes himself who attempts to delude God. For whatever man sows, that and that only is what he will reap. Oh, God, I tell you, this thing set me free, man. This thing set me free. That and that only will he reap. I mean, you know, sowing corruption and think I'm going to have a blessed life. I tried it. 33 and a half years. I came to Christ at 33 and a half, Pastor. 33 and a half years before I got it. Now, you know, my eyes were open. And I came to and I, and I realized that I was the sum total of all that stuff I'd been sowing. Had nothing to do. I wasn't a bad guy. You know, oh, he wasn't a, you know, I mean, he's not a bad guy. You know, she's not a bad girl. It has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the reality of what seeds are being shown, this law of sowing and reaping. It has everything to do with that. Is that all right? Amen. You know how it is sometimes. We, you know, we don't want, you know, we don't want to do the work. We just want, you know, we want the results. We don't, we don't want to, yeah, we don't, we don't want to, you know, we want somebody else to get, somebody else to do it for us. Can you do my push-ups, Ochenna? See? I want to look like Ochenna. Ochenna, can you do my push-ups? It don't, it don't work like that. Amen. For whatever man sows, that, and that only he will reap. For he who sows his own, to his own flesh, lower nature, sensuality, will from the flesh reap decay and ruin and destruction. See, this is love. This is, this is God's love. It's like somebody giving you a heads up. Somebody saying, don't, no, 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 ain't no sense in you going down there. It's a dead end. It's a dead end. I don't care. I don't care how it looks. It's a dead end. Yes. See? And we used to share that all the time. We don't choose evil because it's evil. We mistaken it for happiness. We mistaken it for happiness. The guy said, no, look, 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 look. I'm, I'm, I'm showing you. That's, say, that's love. that's love. That's God's love. That's God's love. Amen. Amen. And like you said, when we begin to sow these seeds, then there's no law against it. There's nothing that can stop the harvest from coming. Nothing. Only one can stop it is me. I'm the only one can stop it. My God. Hallelujah. Listen, it says, and who sold, whoever sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. And let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint, see, and acting nobly and doing right. For in due time, at the appointed season, we shall reap if we do not loosen and relax our courage. Do you know it takes courage in this hour to live right? It takes courage to live for God. So, so Jesus didn't, you know, Jesus didn't come and he offered some, you know, he offered some, you know, little, little uh, 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 you know, tiptoe through the tulip type of life. You know, this, this kind of utopia type of life that people talk about. That ain't what Jesus talked about. He says, no, I've come to make an overcoming life possible for you. I didn't say it was going to be easy. No, it takes courage to stand up when everybody else is going the other way. It takes courage to say, no, 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 I, I will not. I will not do that and defile my God. I, I, will, yeah, I will not do this. I will not do that. It has nothing to do with what everybody else is doing. This is, this is my standard. This is the book. This is, what I, this is what I live for. Before, what were we doing? I, was, I had my own plans. I had my own wisdom. My own understanding. And that, I saw where that got me. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's what Jesus made that statement. Jesus made the statement. He said the blind lead the blind. Then they both fall into the ditch. 
And now they both need roadside assistance. <laughs> See, now, now both of y'all in the ditch. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. So, so that's why we follow the word of God. That's why we follow the word of God. Amen. It takes, tell, tell you that it takes courage to live for God in this hour. Hebrews 12 verse 11 says this here. Now no discipline seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, say nevertheless. Afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained. Praise God. Praise God. Turn over. I want you to see this one. Turn over the Psalms. Got about 15 minutes. Turn over the Psalms. Man, I knew this thing was going to. Turn over the Psalms, chapter 119. 119. One nineteen, Psalms one nineteen. We look at two verses. Psalm one nineteen. We look at verse sixty seven. Verse sixty seven and verse seventy one. Now, now listen at this here. This is what David said. David said, "Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word." Verse seventy one. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. Do you see that? David said, it, it was good. It was good, man, that you spanked me. It was good that you didn't just give me what I wanted when I wanted it. Amen. It's good. It's a good thing. And so then we begin to see the love of God. Turn over to Hosea chapter 10. Hosea chapter 10. One verse of scripture, Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. And I love this here. I'm, in, I'm reading out the NLT. And he said, I said, plant the good seeds of righteousness and you will harvest a crop of love. Plow up the hard ground of your hearts. For now is the time. Say now is the time. For now is the time to seek the Lord. For now, come on. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, now is the time to seek the Lord. I don't care what you did yesterday. I don't care what you did last week. Now is the time to seek the Lord. Watch this. That he may come and shower righteousness upon you. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Turn over to Colossians chapter 2. Come on, man. Come on. I know you're seeing as you see it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That he may come and shower righteousness down on you and I. Amen. You know, right, righteousness, Pastor was talking about a little bit about that in, in Bible study on Wednesday. You know, about righteousness. You know, right standing. Being able to be in the presence of God without fear, without guilt, without condemnation. Now I, I'm in right standing with God. The God who created all things has said, bid me to come. You know how it was like with the king? You couldn't go in the presence of the king. You can't just run up in the presence of the king. You kidding? You get killed. But here it is, you know, the king is bidding you and I to come. He stretched forth his scepter of righteousness and say, come. Hallelujah. Come on, man. It's all right to clap. That's right. You and I, they who knew no mercy, now the king is bidding you and I to come into his presence. And you think something in the world is greater than that? Amen. No, you ain't getting no mercy in the world. You right about that. You get mercy as long as you got a little money. But that's a whole nother, whole nother message. Praise the Lord. But Colossians, Colossians chapter 2. Yeah, people show a lot of mercy when you got money. Even in the church, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I thank God he said come drink freely come drink freely hallelujah come drink freely Colossians 2 6 and 7 it says and now just as you receive Christ Jesus as your Lord how many of you received him as your Lord amen as you receive Christ Jesus as your Lord you must continue to follow him let your roots grow down into him let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong. 
How many of you want your faith to grow strong? And you know, faith is simply trust in God. Trust in God. That your trust in God will become stronger and stronger. Amen? Let the roots grow down in him. Let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught. See, you got to connect it. Got to connect it. My faith will grow strong. How? In the truth that I'm being taught. Now, if I'm not being taught truth, then my faith can't grow strong. Say, so, say, so look at you and say, neighbor, what well are you drinking from? Okay. Amen. Strong in the, in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. That's that's what you see. That's what you see when folks just are dancing. You see them jumping and, and dancing and all that kind of stuff. Like, and, and nobody, you know, I'm be honest with you. Nobody cares what nobody else thinks. I mean, you know, I come to get mine. I come to get mine. Amen. I, come on, that's a good place. Come on, think about it. That's the attitude when we come. I come to soul, I come to soul praise. I come to soul worship. I come to shower him with love and thankfulness. Amen. And in return, what does he do? He rained down righteousness. <laughs> he just rained. My soul starts being refreshed. See, and sometimes people say that, you know, like when you come to church and things of like that, they come and say, oh, I went to church and I just felt so much better. Yes. Yes, because of the presence. Because, now, now, how much more better you feel if you participate? Think about that. Come on. Think about that. How much better? Now, now I'm getting something from you. I'm sitting next to you and now, now it's rubbing off on me. I came in, I was feeling a little heavy, now it's rubbing off on me, it was on you. It said every joint supplying, building itself, edifying itself in love. Amen. So my attitude when I'm coming, I'm not coming just to get. I come to give. Because when you give, when you give, then it's automatic, it's reciprocal. It's the law. Say it's a law. Say it's a spiritual law. If you sow to the spirit, you're going to reap life. Amen. So when I start sowing, I don't ask myself. I don't ask Alton. I don't, I don't ask him. You kidding me? I was asking him for 33 and a half years, man. He let me, he let me out dead in the streets. I'm not going to ask him. I'm telling him. This is what we're getting ready to do. We going, I was standing over here, man, my back, you know, this area of my back here, man, was, was messing with me, man. You got to defy that stuff, man. Man, now I feel like I can jump over these chairs, man. You kidding Praise the Lord, man. It's reciprocal. I, I worship him and praise him. Like we say, we say all the time, your, your, your credit is good, Lord. Your credit is good, Lord. That's right. Your credit is good with me, Lord. I can worship you in advance because I know your credit is good. I can worship you now. I don't even know what the mug holds, but I'm worshiping you today and I'm thanking you today. Come on, man. Ooh, Jesus, this stuff is good, man. All right, this is the last one. See, seeds, ooh, watch this here. Seeds provide a great reproductive advantage. Watch this. And being able to survive for extended periods until conditions are favorable for germination and growth. Now, we're going to break this thing down for you. Seeds provide great reproductive advantage and being able to survive for extended periods until conditions are favorable for germination and growth. And that's one of the things that's so wonderful about seed. That's what's so wonderful about seed. What, what do he tell you? You know, like if you, you, you know, ever worried about, uh, you know, people talking about the end of the world coming, you know, th different things happening, you being stranded or whatever. Uh, they tell you, you know, you get you some water, get you some seeds. That seed will stay. That seed will last. Remember, I said it's in a protective coating. There's a protective coating on that seed, and inside of that seed is a, is a blueprint. It's an assignment telling it what to do, and it's just waiting for the right cultivation, waiting for that right environment to hit it. And that, come on. Soon as that right, soon as it hit that right environment, whew, you don't have to tell it. It knows. It knows. You don't have to tell it. It knows. It knows. Now watch this here. Watch this here. Uh, no matter what you are going, this is what the Lord said, no matter what you are going through, 
Remember, the seed is enclosed in a protective coating. I am in the seed and the seed is in me. See? The seed is in me and I am in the seed. So the seed is always there. It's, it's always there. But what God does is he waits for the right moment to cause it to begin to germinate, to begin to, to flourish. So that's why we, 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 we're wanting to examine and say, okay, Lord, what's going on? You're in a difficult situation? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter to the seed. Doesn't matter to the seed that there's, there's uh, antagonistic people, whatever it is around. It doesn't, the seed doesn't consult with that. The seed does not consult with that. It just waits for the moment that it's watered, it's cultivated, and it's going to germinate. That's why no man can control your destiny. No finite being controls my destiny. They can't. It doesn't matter what's outside here. It doesn't matter what's outside here. You can live in the worst block, worst building, worst wherever. It doesn't matter. It's what's on the inside of me. Come on. The seed is in me. I'm in the seed. I trust the integrity of that seed. Come on, I trust the integrity of the seed. Hallelujah. Yeah, the purpose of the seed is encapsulated. Again, that's what I was saying. Inside of that seed, what is designed to do? And that's why we got to sow the right seeds. We got to check our seeds. If I don't like what I'm seeing, I got to check my seeds. Not my feelings. <laughs> Not my feelings. I got to check the seed. Remember, Pastor, I did that, did that illustration um, uh, a few years ago when it says over in Proverbs chapter 5, it says a man is being held by the cords of his own sin. You know, his own disobedience or maybe his own not obeying God or whatever the case might be. And the illustration was a man that had a noose around his neck. And he's running over to, I'm running over to Pastor, and I'm saying, Pastor, help me, man. Get, get, get this noose off me, Pastor. And he's looking at me like, brother, you, you holding the noose. I'm trying to take it off. You keep, Pastor, get this off me, and I keep moving. He's trying to take the noose. Uh, you know, a man is being held by the cords of his own disobedience. And I keep moving away. Every time Pastor gets closer, that word's getting closer. The word, you know, that represents the word. The word is getting closer. I start moving. I won't sit still. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, sit your butt still. Amen. Amen. Come on. So we give time for this thing to work, this thing to germinate. And then you start seeing it. And then you start seeing little things come up. You know, you see. And then you get excited. You get excited. Don't go back to the dead stuff. Hallelujah. Man, it ain't going to produce nothing. It, can, it can't produce. It can only produce after its kind. It can only produce after this kind. Corruption can only produce corruption. That's it. That's it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, lift your hands.